Hello and welcome to a very exciting new series on the channel where I have the privilege of interviewing some of my favorite artists. It's an absolute honor being able to sit down and understand more about the passions and pure creativity of my guests who I look up to and aspire to be like someday. And this first guest is no exception. He literally, <laughs> I feel like he's kind of like a mentor to me in a way, but uh, yeah, he's super cool, awesome guy. And an artist who no matter what he cooks up always impresses me so much, whether it's his photography, his music video directing, his solo projects, or when he's joined by his just as incredibly talented bandmates in Magnolia Park. This is Joshua Roberts. How does it show me? How does it show me? Yo, what's going on? Uh, what is up? Uh, what's going on? Nothing much, man. Just uh, <laughs> wanted to sit down and talk with you because, you know, you are my first guest on the show. And Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for having me be the first, too. Yeah, man. I can't wait to chop it up. It's going to be awesome. Hell yeah, dude. So I had a lot of friends who I got into uh, to show, like, your music and stuff, too. Yeah, and a lot of them actually had some pretty interesting questions for you as well. So I'm gonna okay. read some of those as well. But yeah, right. so the yeah, first, yeah, the first one, the very first one was uh, well, <laughs> by my friend, my friend Kevin. Okay, what up, Kevin? How's it going? <laughs> Shout out to Kevin. <laughs> Shout out, to Kevin. <laughs> All right, so he wanted to know because I obviously I showed him your uh, your guys's. Halloween mixtape one to start with. Okay. And mm -hmm. he was he liked it, but he was like, it's a bit too pop because he's more into like a rock. He's a rock metal guy. So okay. when, he, when he first heard Do or Die, he like mm -hmm. lost his shit. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he was like, bro, this is incredible. He's like, this is what these okay. guys were meant to do. So all right, all right. Um, he just wanted to know what kind of sparked the idea of creating and dropping the heavier tracks like Do or Die, Animal, and Haunted House. All right, so um, we've all been very inspired by heavier artists. Like me personally, like Slipknot, Linkin Park, System of a Down, like people who like have that grit to their voices. Um, so um, we when we first started the band back in like 2018, it was just like a pop punk project. We wanted to be like a movement style band because uh, we, we love their music, we still love their music, they're, they're homies, um, and we always support them. But um, as as time grew on, you know, we saw Bring Me the Horizon kind of like do this mixture of like this pop punk, but yet heavier side, we're like, no, we want to do that, we want we want to do our own twist to it, so we added like funk elements to yeah. it, and trap elements, and then that's kind of like how, how like that started was literally just being like oh like we see this band doing it it's pretty cool we all wanted to go heavy but we didn't know how to so let's just see what happens and that's kind of like how do or die came out um animal came out out of just pure just we wanted to we wanted to write something heavy then we were like no let's just do something dope something that we haven't done yet yeah. um same thing with haunted house and then same thing with another song that is coming out really soon which is heavier than all of those other songs so hell yeah. yeah can't wait for that it's gonna be crazy yeah and like what better band to like kind of take influence off of i guess than bring me the horizon they've literally done it all oh yeah so. yeah yeah it's so funny because like there are times when we will be thinking of something we're like oh we should do this we should do this and then literally like a couple weeks later Bring Me The Horizon drops a song, and it's literally what we thought of. We're like, what in the world is happening right now? Who is in our group chat that we don't know right now, bro? Okay, this is crazy. Literally. Oh, nah, man. Love those guys. Love yeah. those guys. Great minds think alike, you know? And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So now we know you have your solo project out as well, um, which yes, is incredible. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Literally, is there any... Is there any inspiration behind those tracks that, like, I know you've released, like, a bunch of diff different genres in the band as well, as long as you mm -hmm. solo stuff. Uh, it sounds quite different from each other at points. Uh, like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like myself is very different than the um, album you dropped in uh, yeah. December. Um, 
Do you think so, you're going to continue with that sound, or are you going to kind of mix it up still there? Oh, uh, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to continue with the solo things in general. Yeah. Uh, it it was a fun process. Don't get me wrong. It was really fun. Um, I enjoyed it. I, it was a lot of a lot of creative creative uh, juices flowing. But like, it kind of takes a back seat with the other stuff that's going on unfortunately yeah. um so like it does take a lot out of you when like you know the project's good you know the songs are good but like the the retention and the and the and the um support really like is it f as there as it is with the full band stuff and then, like, right after we, right after I dropped that, we were like, oh, yeah, let's go back into the studio. Let's work on something new. So we've been doing that. So I really haven't really had time to decide whether or not I'm going to continue doing the solo music or not. But if I do, trust me, you'll be the first one to know. Oh, hell yeah, bro. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, yeah. that. Um, no problem. So you're mentioning the studio a lot. Been in there mm -hmm. cooking um yeah we've been, we've been cooking a little bit just a little bit so i guess my question is how do you find time to do all your other like hobbies and side stuff if you're in the studio so much like it seems like if you're not touring if you're not you know in the studio like it seems like you have no time whatsoever you like <laughs> you guys are on tour constantly. oh man we we are on tour constantly yes um i think i think for me is just like just time management really helps I know that we're in the studio from this time to this time every day. So I'm like, all right, cool. I can do a shoot like probably before this or after this or like when I'm on when we're on lunch, I can go there and do that. Um, it just all depends on on what needs to be done, really. Um, so it's it's manageable. It's definitely manageable for sure. That's yeah, that's good to hear because I like I could imagine like myself in like that type of schedule. And like mm -hmm. being completely stressed out, like, mo like it's mentally a, it's, drained. Yeah, it's a brutal schedule. Don't get me wrong; it is it's definitely brutal, especially like when you're in that creative space for so long with other other personalities, like, like budding ideas and stuff like that. It gets it gets a lot sometimes, but you know, mm. just gotta rock with it, roll with the punches. Yeah. All right. So that brings me to my next question, which is: What are some of your most amazing tour memories that you have? Ooh, um, definitely Australia was freaking crazy, dude. I think that's like the craziest crowd we've ever done. Um, especially in Brisbane, dude. Brisbane showed out. It was so incredible. It like even sad. hop, like even hopping, hopping in the crowd during the performance and still playing, and everyone's like singing along and having fun, crowd surfing. It was like, I it. It was the closest thing to to what I would think Woodstock would be, oh, in yeah. my opinion. So I think that was, I think that was pretty sick. Dude, it it looked like so much fun. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was crazy, dude. I can't like it makes us really want to go back and and play more shows out there. Um, because it was it was just amazing. We didn't have a a, a bad time there. Everything was so like fun and energetic the entire time and. It was vibe, man. It was a big vibe. Dude, yeah. Um, I feel like that's just kind of like how it goes when bands from wherever they're from go to like other places because like they don't typically see those bands as often, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's like mm -hmm. just absolutely like the crowd just goes wild for them, you know? Like I feel like that's how like bands from like here, like right now, like with Bad Omens in the UK right now with bring me mm -hmm. but it's like oh my gosh i could only imagine like seeing a band like bring me the horizon like here like i feel like oh my gosh that would be crazy you know that would be so crazy but uh all right let's see hmm oh yeah here's another one from another friend um you know you stream on twitch you play video games um, yeah yeah What's your what was your childhood video game? Your favorite childhood video game, if you have one. Ooh, I have a few, man. I have a few. I have a few. Uh, if we go way way back, 
Super Mario 64 was always a classic for me. Um, Tony Hawk, like Pro Skater, Underground, like all those games was amazing. Uh, Def Jam, Vendetta, Fight for New York, those games. Uh, obviously Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince of Persia was a really good one for me. God of War. Uh, I feel like I'm missing some. Oh yeah, NBA Street, NFL Street. Like oh, those games yeah. are amazing. No. Oh, those are like my like games, man. I always had something to play. Um, whenever I got bored of one game, so it was it was pretty cool to always have that little cycle of yeah. of switching or even going on. For me personally, mine was like Sly Cooper and Ratchet and Clank. I was a PS2 kid. Oh, I was a PS2 kid as well, man. Like, ah, oh, Sly Cooper was lit, dude. That Spyro, like, and then you go into the deep cuts, like like Crash Bandicoot and all these guys. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. and Daxter. Oh, oh. Yeah. God. Oh, I forgot all about that till just now. Oh yeah. my God, Jack and Dexter was lit. Oh, Sonic Heroes. That's another one. That's another Sonic big one for me. Heroes, Sonic Heroes. Bro. Oh my God, I had yeah. that GameCube. I was like, dude, that was, that was awesome. <laughs> that game was lit, dude. I, I literally played it until I could not play it anymore. It would, and God, man, I love that game so much. Hell yeah. Dude, it's that. Yeah, it was like. When I was, like, really young, it was, like, Mario and stuff like that. Like, Smash Brothers, Melee. Oh, yeah. Um, But I feel like once I started to, like, really understand, like, what games were, I feel like the story mm -hmm. behind those PS2 original games were. So, oh, they, they hit. Yeah, They hit sure. different, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, going to avert away from that now. Because yeah, right. I don't know how much, like, you game a ton. Do you game a ton? Yeah, I, I game. I game a decent amount. I would say. I, I try. I try like speed run games nowadays. I'm like, speed I want to see how fast I can be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move back to another kind of side project that you have and some hobbies that you do. Uh, when did right. you start doing photography and making music videos? Oh, uh, man, I started doing photography. I want to say 2014. Um, I always, I always loved the idea of photography and videography. I just didn't have a camera to do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, I worked at a church at the time and they wanted me to like do their announcements and stuff like that. So they literally got me my first camera, which was like Canon T3i. And then I literally ran that thing into the ground. Like <laughs> so many, so many videos, so many, um, so many like announcement videos, so many photos. Like one of my friends was like, yo, like you just got a camera. I think it was like two weeks in. She's like, oh, just take a photo shoot with me. Let's see what happens. And then from there, literally it just started progressing into what I do now. Um, but video work, I think I started in 2015, I want to say 2015, 2016 mm -hmm. um, for music videos. Um, and that was a journey because I started like just like with my like family members who did music or uh, um, just like friends who needed something really quick. So I started there um, and then because they were like, oh, you do short films and stuff like that. So just do a music video for me. I was like, ah, it's different, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, my first videos were definitely rough, but, you know, you, ha you got to learn somewhere. You got to start somewhere. So, yeah. Um, I'm grateful for the people who gave me the opportunities to start that and now I can grow to what I do now and, and hopefully do more of in the future. Dude, for sure. Some of your work like like that I've seen that you've shown, like it's mm -hmm. absolutely insane. Like it's so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. People are always shocked too, like whenever they're like, Oh, like what do you use for your like your photo shoot stuff? Like, they're like, I just use natural light, like whatever lights there, I just kinda of thing make it work. And then I was like you don't use like modifiers. You don't use that. I'm like, nah, not really. I don't. I don't wow. really. Yeah, that, I don't need that to makes it so. even more impressive. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> wild. It's wild. Um, thank you, thank you. Do you have a favorite music video that you've shot? Ooh, a favorite music video that I personally have shot. Uh, I did a video. I think it was 20, 2016, I think it was from a band called the spring it's like an indie band mm -hmm. and the song is called colors of consciousness and it's such like an eclectic video i loved it so much i wish i could do more like just ratty ideas like that again mm -hmm. uh, because it was it was just so fun to do it was so fun to create 
Um, yeah, I think that one would be my favorite. Um, that or Broadsides, uh, one last time. That was a that was a really good one that I did. Yeah. Um, and obviously fell in love in Halloween, Mag Park, like that one the is one of my big, favorites. I'm not gonna lie. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Like just being able to like literally create a visual for your own project and like and that's you are doing is something something special about that. Like so hey. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely some. Hell yeah, dude. Mm. Alright, let's see. Do I have any more questions from friends? Is there anyone that helped you get on the track that led to where you're at now? Say that one more time, sorry. Are there is there anyone that helped you get on track to that led to where you're at right now? Oh man. People people who who, who drop knowledge on me, man. Um I would say my old youth pastor actually, uh Mike Mike Van Karen, he he helped me a lot. I was a troubled child. So <laughs> he helped me a lot get get on that. Um, he actually was the one who, who showed me my, my, who got me my first guitar and was like, like, you, you should play, like, just see what happens, learn. And literally the first week, I think I, I think I literally played guitar for nine hours a day or something like that. Holy moly. Yeah. Like, like, if so, he, so I was using his guitar I learned that and then like he was also teaching like a few other people so by the time like the next week came along and we were meeting up again i was already playing songs <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and everyone else was like still trying to learn how to play like the g chord and i'm like nah, i already i already learned i don't know how to play this song so I, I literally like dove in and everyone was like yo like what the hell like how did you learn this in a week i was like look man i i put time in and my my fingers were hurting like non-stop like they were calloused and yeah i was gonna say that must be that must have been hell on the fingers bro dude i worked through the pain i didn't care i wanted i like as soon as i had it i was like oh, yeah i'm not i'm not letting it go because i already knew how to play piano in, in a sense so like now playing guitar which is like different is like something like that was like, all right cool i have to learn this like i can't stop i won't if i do stop i won't pick it up again so yeah that's something that like i, I pride myself on of, of, of having mike help me out with that um who helped me along the way obviously uh my producers uh andrew and andy uh they helped me a lot um whenever it comes to confidence in my own music and my own sound yeah um and I think that's it. I think that's it for. Oh, I mean, actually, no, it's not. That's not. You got Derek from Mayday Parade. Mm -hmm. He's helped me a lot, uh, especially with uh, doing live work. Mm -hmm. Same thing with uh, Kyle and um, Cody from Real Friends. They both have helped me out a lot. Yeah. Um. Just like I learn, I learn things every single tour that I do. Like with with another artist, I learn. I learned from the other artists a lot and it kind of helps him be a better performer, um, be just something that like I've always done. So like now being on the same stage as people who've done it like 10, 20 years yeah. can literally show like the, the progress of what they do and how they do it. And it, it helps a lot, a lot. Yeah. That leads me yeah. to a pretty common question. I have a feeling, but mm -hmm. it's always fun to ask. Um, if you could collaborate with any artist and band in the scene today, who would it be and why? Ooh, uh, any band today. See, people would expect me to say Ollie from Bring Me the Horizon. People would expect me to say that. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say the unexpected sometimes. Uh, I'd probably say Patrick from Movements. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Patrick from Movements because our voices would probably mesh really, really well on the track. Oh yeah, I can and our our writing styles are are are, are similar, so it would it'll help out a lot easier too. So yeah, I'd say I'd definitely say like movements. Like yeah, it would be cool to do a Magnolia Park movements collab. That would be so sick. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. just thinking about that. Um, yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say for me personally, I would love to see you guys like 
collab with a super heavy band, like Ooh. like a Bad Omens. Bad Omens would be cool. Or like, uh, what's another hmm. one? You know, or like a I Prevail. I Prevail would be dope. Have I had a chance to meet meeting them? I were at a lot of good things. They were cool. Yeah. Um. I mean, I would shoot for the stars and say Slipknot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're they're sick. still rocking. That would be cool. Or Corn even. Corn would be really, really sick to do, like, something something funky with it, you know? Yeah. Like, I, like if I want to do something with a heavy band, I, like, I want to make sure that it's something that, like, it's so out of the ordinary for, for like, both sides of the genre oh, listening. Yeah. They're like, oh, what? What is this? And why do I like it? Like, I think that would be super sick to do. Dude, hell yeah. It's like when, um, it's like we're seeing, like, all these, like, collabs with, like, pop stars now with, like, metal bands, you know? Like, yeah. Like, Bring Me and Ed Sheeran and, um, Megan the Stallion and Spirit Box. Like, that one was crazy. No one saw that <laughs> one. <laughs> like, that was not on my bucket list, man. I was like, what in the world just happened? It was, oh, what? It was so sick, though. It's like, it works. Like, <laughs> Yeah, in a weird way it worked, and that, that's that's what I mean. Like, like if I want to pick a heavier artist, it has to be something in such a weird way mm -hmm. that people are like, "What did I just listen to, and why did it work?" Yeah, like sure. that's that's something that 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 I I would need to happen. Oh, that gives me an idea. Like, Ice Nine Kills. Do like a Halloween track, since y'all are about that mm -hmm. as well, you know. Look, man, if Ice Nine would ever do a song with us, I think it'll be crazy. Yeah, yeah, dude. And I be... think it would be, I think it would go insane. Yeah. Just like, oh, man. <laughs> you got like, there's the... a lot of artists, there's a lot of artists out there that, that are really good at what they do and like, just to be, I would be blessed just to do a song with any of them, like, honestly. Yeah. Like, if most of us are white, we'd be like, hey, let's do a song together. Like, yes, let's, let's <laughs> yeah. fucking, yeah. let's, let's go balls to the wall. Let's do something crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. or even Ice Nine or, or anyone else. It's just the fact of, like, whoever wants to collaborate with us, since we are such a, a, a out of the box type of band, like, we're not, we're not a conventional style band. I mean, I mean, like, I'd, I'd take anything. I'd be honored to, to to collab with anyone, really. Yeah. Love to love to see some more collabs in the future. Hell yeah, dude. Hopefully, it's coming soon. Hopefully, hopefully. I don't know, but you know, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, man. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we have time for one more. So, All right. uh, this one I'm pretty sure is also. Very common, <laughs> but yeah. uh, what's one piece of advice that you would give to up and coming artists who look up to you? Ooh, one piece of advice. Uh, I think I was telling you this actually. Uh, like, like, don't don't be afraid to let your talent show. I mean, like, you're 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 in a position for a reason, so utilize that position to the to the utmost. Like, always always do what you believe in, and don't let anyone who isn't doing what you're doing dictate how you should do it or what you should be doing because it's your dream it's your passion and only you will solve the issues that need to be solved to make sure that your passion gets through yeah so always believe in yourself and i know that that is the hardest thing to do at times but always believe in yourself and don't let anyone tell you about your dreams because they're your dreams for a reason not theirs Hell yeah. Dude, thank you so much for joining me. Dude, anytime, it's, bro. It's, anytime. It's so much. And hopefully mm -hmm. we can get the whole band on here sometime. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. We, we were starting to hang out again. Like, so, like, now now we have more time to hang out with each other and stuff. So, hell yeah, for sure. We can, we can make it happen. All right, bet. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you guys for watching. And this was Joshua yeah. Roberts.